Here we go again. If you're a professional club, you could afford to have a president that runs everything with an email and sort of tells people what to do. At a community level, you've got to be a jack of all trades. Um, there's supposed to be one more game going on here. Right? You've got to be prepared to jump in the, in the canteen and uh, make coffees. You say, Wendy, can you go home? I said, can we go home? Okay. You've got to be prepared to, you know, serve customers and sell chips. Some chips. One serve of chips, $50. Nothing, you don't even play, I'll give you change. Pump the soccer balls, do the line marking, gotta be comfortable meeting with sponsors and, uh, and politicians and local council. So just the day to day running off the club, you know, so they, they're the little things that, that I do. So I've been at Calandra Football Club for 18 years, uh, my eldest boy. I uh, wanted, wanted to play soccer and um, he was four years old. So we took him to, to a little game and, uh, and from then we sort of got involved. We started uh, just assisting, cutting oranges and, uh, and helping with uh, training to coaching and slowly progressed to taking over as club president. You know, I promised my wife when I took my son to the first football game that I wasn't going to get involved at all. That I was just going to be one of the dads on the sideline. And, uh, Two games into it, the Argentinian passion kicked in and I was running the sun and telling the kids what to do and how to do throw-ins and, uh, you know, running training sessions. And from then on, that's it, spiral to taking half of my life. My name's Gary Gray. I have been involved with the club for 15 years now, I guess. The family and I moved to the Sunshine Coast from North Queensland in 2006. At that stage with football, I looked after the youngest child, the coach that was there. I asked him at one stage, did he need a hand to do the admin stuff? And I started following those lads by doing all the admin work, keeping the stats. That's why I've earned the name Statman as well as my other titles and stayed with the club for some time. Yeah, well, I suppose my background in sport in general is very limited in football. I came from an era in the 70s where it was essentially a Wogs game and <laughs> no one much played football. But I still have a passion for the game and a passion for the club, and I get a lot of satisfaction out of doing a lot of these things. Certainly even the line marking. Some days you just look back, and despite the banter you cop about where you're drunk when you mark this line, you do actually keep it going. I'm looking now at the lines. With a week's rain, they're just about all washed out. And to be honest, if I don't get them done today, there's gonna be no, no game tomorrow night. So the job's in front of me.
Did you get a shirt? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Beautiful football. In Holland, it would be the Ajax style of play. The Cruyff style of play with true wingers like Mark Overmars, one that wants the ball and wants to take on his direct opponent. The, the whole team would be moving and as a unit, up and down, sideways, and that's a little bit what I try to instill on the under 23s, I suppose. Number? 35. My age. Excellent. What the f It didn't save. This is just stupid. I'll have um, Gary do this. My family and I, we uh, came to Kelowna in 2009. The main roles I've done throughout the years is coaching all kinds of teams. But anything really that needs doing, I, I'm always helping out. Especially the last three, four years, I had the oldest junior teams in this club. And I always had a, uh, my neck hair sometimes came up when I saw the reserves play. And I always thought, oh, would I be able to do this? Well, this year I got a text from Nick with the question that Louis was looking for someone to, to help him. And I was, I was happy to do it. Give me, give me the ball, give me a ball. Yes, yeah, so you see the whole square, yeah? Ball possession, open. You lose the ball, win it back as soon as you can. Move sideways, yeah, yeah. You could have been here earlier. My goal for this year, I suppose all coaches will have the same goal. You want to become top of the leaderboard. That is always a goal. It doesn't matter if you are in diff five, diff four, diff three, resis under 23s, the premiers. I think always the goal is to have fun at what you do. And how do you have the best fun? Is by winning. And I want to be at the top at the end of the year. Sprinting on the spot. <laughs> you wanted to sprint away, eh? And jog. Knees up, nice and quick. And jog. And jump and 10 meters away, go. Today it's all about winning. Everyone. Everyone is helping each other. Deal? Yeah. Yeah. Let's get out there. That's good. Harry's big. Turn! Godverdomme, you! Concentrate on those passes, man! Yeah, higher, higher, Brendan, go! Go, Brendan! Go, go on, go on! Send him. No way! No way! <laughs> no way! Oh, what a game. You got the winner, man. Volunteers at any any club are absolutely vital. In fact, volunteers in most industries and most clubs of any code, of any style, are vital. Without them, it just doesn't happen. One of the biggest problems you can have when a club is being run well is complacency. People just sit back and think, oh, everything's going well, I don't need to help out. The problem with that is 
the people that are doing all the work gradually get tired as they just drop off because they can't do it anymore. There's no one to carry on the baton. We're all time poor these days, but sometimes you need to make the time. Um, sometimes I also get things thrown at me at the last minute because in my role as management of a team, it'll be, we need volunteers. Can you get volunteers to be ground officials, say, on a, for a finals thing? So I send out a, um, a message through the group chat to the team and um, pretty much might get a like or something like that, but no one actually says, I can help out. So then you send out another one a couple of days later and um, repeat it. And then after a while you get someone saying, oh, I'm busy that weekend. Well, thanks for letting me know, but at least I know that you can't make it. And um, it goes on like that. I'll have a look and see if I can find any black socks. Hey, Nick, how you going? We haven't got a pair of old black socks anywhere, have we? Oh. I like to aim. If he's got a size 10 foot, he might be uncomfortable, but he might remember to wear them next time. So it's becoming more and more a one-man band with Nick and his family doing the bulk of the work that's required. And it's just too much. And it becomes very easy for people to say, oh, what's Nick doing about this? Well, maybe we should ask, what are you doing about this? instead. Either one, two, nice, better. Right, bounce back, good, 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 let's go. So as well as being uh, the club president, um, I coach the, the Premier Division One ladies and the, the under 23s ladies team. Go, yes, attack it. Micah, you're in, you're in, you're in, defend, defend, defend. Nice, we're quick. Recover, 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 let's go. Keep us up! <laughs> Most clubs, especially after COVID, have struggled with, uh, with the volunteer base. We had a really good core group of, of members that um, wanted to coach other teams and influence young, younger players, and, and we're lacking that a little bit at the moment. We, we tried to um, incentivize the senior teams uh, to, to assist with coaching. And, um, you know, unfortunately, we ended up with, uh, with uh, a little team of under 10s with no coach. So as it turned out, I put my hand up and went and, and started coaching them. I actually quite enjoyed, you know, coaching a, a, a young team. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> take over, take over. No, he's going to take over. Grab the cones out, grab the balls. We'll bring the goals a little bit. I'm going to play a quick little game, yo. I think people have to, to see it, to believe it. They've got to be part of it. And, uh, um, you know, it doesn't matter how many incentives we give them until they actually try it and they see their personal reward out of it, the more likely they are to engage and, uh, and help out. Involved at the club like affected the family throughout the years? That's a tough one. Football was always my thing. Uh, you know, ever since I came to Australia, it was Nick football. Um, you know, I think it was probably what kept me saying in this country when I was young. It was part of the, the, the family life and somehow, some way, the more I threw myself into football and it became my part, maybe at times the kids missed out on, on dad, not coaching them, coaching everybody else. Maybe at times me being here until late on a Saturday didn't fit with the whole family. I guess through time, you turn around and you, you discover that, um, that you're not on the same path anymore. I only looked at my happiness and what made me happy was coaching, you know, um, being involved at the football club, and I thought that made them happy as well, and, and for most of the time it did. <laughs> How many touches there? First win with the, with the team, first game. 
of official game of the season. Um, it was it was impressive, I thought, because we we don't gel yet as much as I would like. Okay. Eight for me. Yep. You can only work on stuff if your if your main eleven are at training, and it hardly ever happens. Um, so that that's that's tough. Also, usually on the Tuesday, Louis runs the training fully, which are great, but sometimes not specifically on what I need to work on. And it's really hard to prepare. And I always have stuff in my head, and then I end up with eight players on the Thursday. A tactical session, which, which I then think, oh, that's pretty useless if you're not with the whole team. Um, but yeah, that's how it is. Big challenge. And go over. Good. Nice. I saw a goal there. Maybe even two. Oh, Hayden. Too much space, eh? I'm not sure if I'm if I'm saying this because I'm old myself, but. You know, back in the days, we wanted to be there. We wanted to work. We had a, a, a specific team bond where everyone helped each other. Um, but we all we were also mates. We would hang out in the pub after, or we would hang in the clubhouse after a training session on, on Thursday night. And that it doesn't happen in our team. For whatever reasons, everyone always have, have great reasons. This weekend, someone is out because he needs to help his brother moving house. Well, that's that's fine. You know, great reason. Would I have to make the same reason? Definitely not. I remember that my my dad moved house to uh, from one town to another town in Holland, and I had to tell him, "Well, I'm playing a game. I can make it after, maybe, or before, or the day after. I can take a day off. Sundays was a football day." and nothing came in between that. Whatever, whatever reason. Obviously, maybe my daughter was born on a Sunday. <laughs> that's a different thing. I think that's a different thing. That's next level. If you don't have an option, protect that ball. Give him an elbow. He's got this, he's got this huge bump on his forehead. Try to, try to hit it. Yes, unlucky Brandon. I saw what you wanted to do. Hopefully, maybe with my enthusiasm, I instill that a little bit, but like I said, often it's training and boom, in the car. Often it's game, boom, in the car. So you, you don't get to talk to people a lot after training or, or game day. So there's not many other opportunities. Come on boys. Come on, boys. What are the boys doing now that they are older? Are they still involved at the club? Yeah, the boys aren't with the club anymore. They've certainly enjoyed their football. My eldest one, Matt, he works away a lot, and a lot of overnight shifts, which means he can't commit to training and um, doesn't feel that he can support the team. So he's let his football go at the moment. I hope it's only a, a minor thing. Uh, my youngest boy, Josh, he played a season in third div seniors and um, stopped playing that after that season and got into going to the gym and 
building himself up, but I still hope one day he might just show up for training and kick a ball around. What's the day? 19. Switch is on. Uh, why do you still hang around at the club? Why do I still do it when the boys aren't here um, and it's just me? Multiple reasons. After my marriage broke down, I was probably looking for some support from other people and I found that at the club. You know, there's a lot of loyal people, a lot of loyal friends here and sometimes you come back and you, you do find a bit of a purpose with that. I've got a new relationship now and life is really good there. But I do still appreciate what the guys from the club did for me, what the other members did for me when I was struggling. From there I've been paying that back, I think, and being around. Um, it, it's just great to have people that actually care about, about you. I mean, I've got good family members and, you know, good, good family, but you expect them to look after you in those times. It's the people from outside your family become your new family. And um, it is, it's, it's family to me. I do love it and love to see it do well. Finishing season um, on the bottom of the ladder is not how I uh, wanted the season to go. We had to forfeit three times. We used over 30 players. On training day, on regular training day, we would have maybe five of our team. So you can't build on stuff when the puppets are not there. Finally, that was me today, 2 nil. The kids, they don't live with me anymore, uh, so I am dependent on uh, stuff to do. If I don't do the club and work from home, I don't see a soul anymore. So yes, I, I, I'm happy to help out Nick in whatever he needs me to do. Set them up! So I, I see my daughter, Robin, a lot here at the club. That's, that's good to see the daughter every time I'm here. Although it's nowadays a 40 minute drive, I'm really happy that, to be involved and to call a lot of people in this club my family. I love this club. You know, it's it's a big club. We've um, um, we've got a lot of uh, passionate people, and you know, I enjoy what I what I do. It's my time away from from work. I work so so I have time to be at the club. You know, this is outside of my family. This is where where I like spending my time, my spare time. This is my second family. So, you know, I don't see it as taking responsibility. I see it as spending, you know, quality time somewhere that I like, I like being. If I won the lottery, that's what I'll be doing. I'll be spending time at the club, probably sitting on a really comfortable mower, headset on, just, just mowing the field two or three times a week to make sure that it was, it was perfect. That's my retirement plan. That's my vision. <laughs> My kids now tell me, Dad, the club is everything for you now. You know, even more important than what it was before. You know, it's had a lot of ups and uh, a lot of downs, mostly ups. And, uh, and quite often when I look at uh, the last 10 or so years, I see the club way different and, and, and in a much better state than, than what it was. Uh, so probably even more passionate and have a bigger interest now in the club than I would have um, rather than looking at it in a negative way. Yeah, nice work, nice work, Kelly! It's given me a lot of 
great experiences and I'm grateful for ha having the opportunity to be, be part of his club. When you're working in a committee and when there's um, deep jobs to be done, you do build up an affinity with those people. You do certainly develop some long-lasting friendships and there's a common bond between us all, which is Calandra Football Club. I think I came to this world as a server. I'm happy when I help out. It's fulfilling to sit there with mates where you have worked hard with the whole day, just to sit at the end of the day and say to each other, We've done it again. We've made a lot of people happy today. Sure.